Welcome back designers. Today we are talking about photography and illustration. Now when it comes to available imagery, photography and illustration are your two go-to's for graphic design. Most of the time there is a pretty straightforward choice between a realistic photograph and a perhaps less realistic illustration. And I say perhaps because Today in our digital landscape, the boundary between photography and illustration has become increasingly blurred. There are many possible approaches. So first you need to think about what you are saying and how you want your message to be understood and interpreted. The direction you decide to go in will depend a great deal on the industry in which you are working and who your target audience is. For example, you would probably choose the more traditional route of gorgeous scenic photography for the often more conservative high-end travel uh, market that frequents the Four Seasons, like we see here, um, as opposed to the millennials who purchase Apple products. Photography is often the go-to because for many clients, it's crucial to show the product that they're selling. That often means beautifully photographed and highly realistic images showing the product in the most flattering light, literally, possible. So if it's uh, important that the product be seen, you often will choose photography. But you don't have to. Just like all rules, design rules are made to be broken. And I want to show you this because it is a great example of going against the norm, plus it's a wonderful example of successful branding. This is the J. Peterman Company, and they, their uh, whole look represents an aspirational lifestyle. They say that, quote, our selections enable our customers to feel transported to a world full of travel, adventure, and romance, a world where the uncommon journey creates the memories we cherish most. The company's history is routed or rooted in this aspiration, and we try to live up to it every single day. So this is a company that sells clothing and yet they are choosing to represent their product through illustration and not the more common route of photography. Now, how do they do the, the claim that I just read to you? They do it by breaking the rules. So they're, they're these rule breaker, bad boys sort of, um, bad boys is probably the wrong term, um, just out of the box thinkers. And that's who they're marketing to, and that's how they market themselves. So um, quirky, I guess is a good word. So their owner's manual, they call their catalog the owner's manual, and there's a number, 178 on there. That's how many have come out. I don't think it comes out every month, probably so seasonal, probably a few times a year. Um, so this is a typical page where they show one product on a page. It uses painting, usually watercolor, gouache look. Um, it's uncoated paper. It's oversized. Um, and it's accompanied by, uh, well, I'll get to that in a second. Um, oh yeah, accompanied by some intensively romantic copy, which I'll show you in a second. Um, this just shows even on the, actually, I think that I didn't, well, obviously you can't click it now because this is just a still image, but I think the little thumbnails to the far left, that might be um, a photograph with them wearing the product, which would be new. I mean, that, maybe that's been like that for, for websites since it's, uh, I used to buy from them back before websites existed. Yes, I'm that old. Um, here is, let me think, I should come up in a second, the kind of text. Here we go. Thomas Jefferson dislikes stuffy people, stuffy houses, stuffy society, so he changed a few things. Blah, 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 blah. I think you'll feel the same about this 18th century shirt. Classic, simple, livable. That's called the Jefferson shirt, by the way. So it was accompanied by this, this fun to read text. So they defied the prevailing mindset of having to use photography, and illustration became their central branding element. I mean, this is because no one else was doing it. Remember, differentiate when you're branding. So the style not only set them apart from every other clothing supplier in the market, but it also captured and communicated something of the spirit the brand was trying to express. This is, uh, not, probably none of you would remember this, but when Banana Republic first appeared, it had much more of this sort of travel sort of feel. I don't think they used illustrations per se, but it had much more of the, you know, safari sort of feel. And then it got to be more like, you know, high-end gap. Here's some more artwork. So they're reminiscent of the sort of hand-done sketches that one might find in a travel journal of a world traveler. 
So it all just really plays into this whole aspirational uh, lifestyle that they're their fairly well-off um, clientele would want to aspire to because this stuff, I don't know if you noticed that jacket, that was like a $400 jacket. Um, so it communicated an authenticity about what they were selling. So Peterman is an exception, but it brings up an important point about taking a step back from what is expected. How do you show a product that's hard to show? And this is another brilliant example. I mean, they are showing it, it's on, it's on their lip, but you know, We'll, we'll let them get away with that. Um, if you're working on a corporate design like, say, IBM, where a product is harder to depict, I mean, how do you depict IBM? Not, it's not a particular computer they're selling, just the whole idea. Um, often more abstract or evocative images can be used. It's one of the reasons icons are so popular. They can kind of cover, every, they, they cover a lot, but they don't, um, they don't limit the user because they're abstract enough that they can apply to anyone, everyone. So a lot of Broadway shows have used illustration because, first of all, the casts are often changing, so it gets to be too expensive to keep updating the marketing materials. And theater, in general, relies on ideas or themes more than, say, film. It's less reality-based than film. Um, and so finding the right photo can be hard, plus illustration just has that... that um, Word magical is in my head, and I don't want that. It's a it's an easy word. Um, transcendent feel that illustration can do sometimes. Oh, there it is. I, gosh, I should just wait till my next slide. It can be bigger than life. Some large brands use both, or maybe they break up one product line from another. I mean, this is two very different looks for Starbucks, but you know it's Starbucks mostly because that logo is on there. But there's also a sensibility, a color palette, the use of that cream color that's that's part of their um, their discoveries series there on the right. And often if they use photography for their main products, they'll use illustration for more ancillary branding efforts, like you know, a rewards card or something like that, not their main advertisements. So you have to ask yourself, what emotion or tone are you trying to convey? There's two different posters for Death of a Salesman. They both give a very different feel of what that evening of theater is going to be like. And the one on the right is all wrong. The one on the left is much closer to the spirit of the play. Sometimes a single technique is in inadequate to communicate the nuances of a brand. So custom combinations are invented, which once again, the digital landscape allows us to do. When you combine different images, you can say something brand new. Delicate art alone can evoke, in this sample, um, a look of old etchings and sort of an old feel, but when these offbeat images are put into these unusual pairings with these unusual colors, they make a more contemporary statement. So one of the things we have not talked about is um, budget. So very often when you're, and this is not going to apply to you in a class, but one of the main things that dictates what direction you go in is how much money you have and also your time frame. Um, so when I talk about finding the perfect thing to express what you're selling, that's a fairly idealized um, interpretation that I'm selling you there. Uh, very often, um, custom, like custom photography, which this still picture here is showing you a, a photo shoot, that's going to be in general, generally a lot more expensive than to find uh, a stock image on um, online. It's not always the case. I mean, sometimes a uh, rights managed image can cost, you know, five hundred dollars up front, and then it has to, they charge you five hundred dollars every quarter thereafter. So it becomes you know two thousand dollars for that year. I mean, I'm 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 lowballing it. It's probably higher than that. Um, so then you have to weigh how much it costs to have a custom photographer. Hire your photographer, your space art director, um, to shoot your very own photography that you would then own. Um, but these are things that you would um, you would decide in budget meetings and, and such. Now, custom illustration, as we see here, can also be expensive. Um, and when I say custom, I mean literally custom, that it is created for you. You've hired this artist to um, make something that you are specifying to them. It is not um, something already made that you're buying from them. So you have a lot more control over 
what the product is. Um, sometimes with illustration, you are more limited in what you can change once, once an artist gets going, but the digital age has changed a lot of that. So many more artists are working um, digitally that they can almost always go back and change an element if a client doesn't like something. I come back, I come from the days where you be pre-digital where the illustration was the illustration and the client would say, I wanna make that, you know, I wanna make all that type purple instead of blue. You just really couldn't do it without possibly having to redo the entire illustration, which would cost more money. So um, photo montage is a great workaround. Um, it, it can save a lot of money. Uh, this example here, I'm pretty sure that's three different sandwiched photos. That car is probably in a studio. That man is also in a studio, both in front of a uh, screen, um, a seamless we call it. It's a white screen that the person can be easily cut out of. Um, and that background, I'm not sure what city is, but that's probably just a scenic shot of whatever city. I mean, I could be wrong. That car might be in that, in that city, but um, that just allows a lot of flexibility. And for example, um, they might have shot that background image by themselves, or they might have found that on one of the royalty-free sites for 20 bucks. So rather than flying to, let's just say that's Singapore, they're gonna fly to Singapore and bring their car and bring their model, um, which is what they're, what it looks like it could be, um, no one's gonna be able to, to pay the money for that. So to do digital manipulation is the way to go. Um, also, you can use it when you're doing something that's impossible to shoot. I mean, this is impossible because A, the guy has a gecko hand, and secondly, because he is outside on the window, which you really, <laughs> I don't think insurance-wise you could ever uh, shoot this. You can also combine layering effect to get a more illustrative look um, to create your own narrative. You can take just two images and two unlike images, put them together, and you're sort of telling a little story. And that also straddles the line of like, is that illustration? Is that photography? Other options are um, already existing stock photography. And there are various categories for that, for, for stock photography. I'm showing you Getty images, which is one of the preeminent one. And one of the, it's, it's a very good one. Um, so this is when like, you see the Duomo there in Florence. Now, like I just gave the example with the car. Why fly out a whole crew to take a picture that has already been photographed 5,000 times by other photographers um, who actually live there? So that's kind of was where stock photography began. For, for travel stuff, it's great because it's just cost prohibitive. Um, and let's see what my next one is. Oh, yeah, here's one. This is just another collage example, which I really don't need. I think I've made my point about cutting people out, putting them on backgrounds. And we will get back to... Um, it's a combination of illustration and photography and um, taking photographs and transforming them into high contrast illustrations is a way to move these models, for example, the models in the pictures away from their actual identities. Like the couple on the left, it becomes less about, you know, that pretty girl and more she's just a girl with long hair. And it becomes more about that tableau of the couple almost kissing than it is about those two particular models or actors. Okay, now we're back to where I was with Getty Images. So RF and RM means uh, royalty-free or rights-managed. Royalty-free is your friend. That means basically once you pay for the image once, you can use it as much as you want. Now that's a very broad statement because there are some various rules and laws that um, are changing with that. But rights-managed is the more expensive route and that means you never quite have the, you, you, you purchase the right to use it in one very specific way. For example, you have to say, uh, Toyota has to say to Getty, um, we want a picture of the Duomo there in Florence. Uh, we're only, we're using it in print ads. And that means they can't just use it if they want in a billboard or use it on um, online. Um, for that, they have to negotiate a different price with Getty. Uh, and the other thing about rights managed is it's very it's much more elite it, and it's something that you have to have a big budget often to use. Um, you have to re um, negotiate every four months or, or every three months, I think quarterly, and you have to pay for it again. So suffice it to say, unless you're working for someone really high end, you're not going to use rights managed. You're going to use royalty free. Uh, Getty and Alamy are two of the best ones that have both, and most have both. 
but you have to specify when you're searching if you want. You can see there on the left um, in my screen capture under license type, it says royalty free or rights managed. You want to make sure it has a little RF on it. Now there's different kinds of royalty free stock. These are less expensive stock houses and they, and Shutterstock being the top name I have there and, and the screen capture is the preeminent one. Um, they sell subscriptions. So what I do, I pay $100 uh, a month and I have access to get as many as 50 images from Shutterstock. And they have uh, vector illustrations as well as photography. So it's, it's a really good deal. It also lends itself to things like photo montage because I can get several images for, you know, for my monthly subscription and then put them together into something really cool. I think that's why I was showing you um, this stuff because those are combinations of things you couldn't really photograph but you can put together with pieces like into the woods there. That's probably, if you take, even take the people out of it that were obviously shot separately, those are it's still probably about four or five different images sandwiched together. Um, illustration Studios, this is the illustration equivalent of Rights Managed. Um, I'm sorry, of, of actually more like Shutterstock where you buy a subscription and then there are agencies that represent certain illustrators. So this is also much more high end. In this case, you're usually hiring the illustrator based on their portfolio and they're gonna do something custom for you. And I just put those websites uh, on there in case it's something you wanna look into. Um, other options are things like the Professional Association, AIGA for graphic designers, um, as well as Behance. And Behance in the upper right is part of the Creative Cloud, Adobe's Creative Cloud. It's basically just a portfolio site I shouldn't say just, but that's basically what it is. There's some people on there for just amateur reasons. They just want to have their stuff online. Other people are selling. Um, but it's a good place to look for inspiration or um, very possibly to purchase um, work from an artist. And I think this is my last slide. The last two are public domain and free love free. Public domain is basically just things that have, after a certain amount of time, um, I forget how many years it is, 50 or 60 years, uh, something that was previously licensed can enter the public domain, which just means that anyone is allowed to use it. And the, the art example I have there is something I did for um, St. Mary's College of Maryland, and that's all these editorial images, historic images that um, I wouldn't be able to purchase. I mean, you wouldn't be able to find those, first of all, and I wouldn't have the right to use them. But once they enter the public domain, you're guaranteed that you're allowed to use them. And then the free ones are just some various sites that have free free stuff, and they make their money by you know, selling selling banner ads and such. And I think that is the end. That is the end. So that went on longer than I thought. Um, really did this to kind of just help you with your... Um, the ad you're doing for your rebranding project to, to just help you get your thoughts together. Anyhow, uh, until next time, uh, I don't think there's a quiz for this one. Um, lucky you. See you soon.